Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Beate Rabe. I'm the Secretary General of Eurogas. I've been with this organization for three years. Previously, I was with the, the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers, and I was heading the EU office of, of that association. And uh, in Brussels, I've been since 1993. So I have seen EU legislation evolve over 21 years. And since 1998, I've seen it evolve in the energy sector. And uh, it's from, from that perspective that um, I share my views with you um, this morning. Um, to introduce the organization to you, Eurogas represents companies and national associations, also um, European associations, involved in the wholesale, retail and, and distribution of, of gas uh, in Europe. And you see on the map where our members are. We have an, an association um, membership from the Russian Gas Society, and uh, we also have Naftogaz Ukraine as an associate member, so that is possible within Eurogas, and we also have the Turkish Association as an associate member. What I would like to, to address this morning in, in particular is um, cooperation in EU energy policies. Professor, Professor Glachon has already spoken about the um, international instruments that, that exist for, for cooperation, and I would like to focus a little bit more on the uh, internal cooperation mechanisms that we, we have in EU uh, policies and, and legislation. Well, and here we have uh, our, our friends again. We have already seen them on the screen several times this morning, and uh, they are our guiding principles. So um, it's normal that they, they come up again and again. So what we want to achieve is um, a secure, a competitive, and, uh, and a clean energy system. And uh, over the years, we have created a number of um, major instruments. Of course, there, there are a lot more. I've just picked the, the major instruments on the right-hand side to see um, how um, these three object objectives are to be achieved. And not surprisingly, um, there are uh, lots of crossovers uh, between the objectives and, and the instruments. And that's normal as well, because um, the instruments are supposed to be coordinated and they are supposed to work towards the main goals. So that's why the, the crossovers um, are actually um, intended and, uh, and they should work if they work. Um, if you look at um, security, for example, because that is in particular in the spotlight um, uh, at these times, um, the internal energy market is probably um, the most important instrument to ensure security of supply because if gas can be sold um, from one corner of the EU to, to the other, um, if electricity can do the same, um, then that is um, the main instrument you have to make sure that the energy goes where it is particularly needed. Um, but uh, you see that security is also linked to the, the infrastructure package because you need the physical interlinkage in, in order to um, make the exchange of, of energy work. And uh, security also goes down, of course, to the security of, of gas supply regulation um, because that is the regulation that addresses what should be done if there is a problem. But also the, the 2020 package and um, the future 2030 package has a strong link with security of, of supply um, because, well, we want to reduce the demand of energy through energy efficiency and uh, we also want to have more renewables as an additional source of, of energy and all that uh, contributes to, to security. Um, as far as competitiveness is concerned, well, of course, the internal energy market, um, for it to, to work, it has to be based on, on competition, it has to be based on fair competition and, and a level playing field. 
We need the physical interlinkage um, for, for um, competition um, so that companies can work, sell and, and compete across the, um, the infrastructure. And, uh, and then if you have all those competitors, if you have a lot of companies in the market, again, that is an element of, of security. And uh, the 20, 2020 package is, of course, also based on, on competition because we are seeking to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and we are also seeking to, to develop renewables and energy efficiency in the most cost-effective, competitive way. Whether or not we're doing that, that's a different story. And I will address that also in a moment. And then, of course, the energy is supposed to be clean. Um, you can do that that via the internal energy market. Um, you can also do that by um, having um, a well-built infrastructure because if you can sell renewable energy um, across the border, if you have the network to support, su uh, support the exchange of, of renewable energy, then you don't have the problems that we have at, at present that people don't know where to go with their um, excess um, energy from, from renewables. Then it can go where it is needed in, in the market. And, uh, and then, of course, the 2020 package speaks for itself as far as um, energy security, uh, as far as uh, cleanliness is, is concerned. Now, the um, instruments we have on, on the right-hand side, they all have an element of, of cooperation in them. Um, in the internal energy market, you need the, the cooperation, um, first of all, between the member states. In order to, to have cross-border trade, you need cooperation. Um, but cooperation also means that you are giving a chance to others to work in your country and you are giving your own companies the, ch the, the chance to, to work across the borders. Cooperation uh, can have different definitions. It can mean on the one hand that you are working towards um, the same goal. It can also mean that you help each other out when um, you have, have a problem, but overall it also also means openness and it also means that um, you are allowing you if you are the government you are allowing to work uh, companies to work in in your country um, you are allowing joint ventures and here we we have the cooperation element again now if we look at individual instruments now if we look at the internal energy market um, the um, the energy market has made progress. I mean, the, the, there are a lot, lot of negatives about it, but we do have to admit we have come quite a step forward. Um, it is possible to do business now. It is possible um, to, to do business across the borders. It is possible to establish yourself in, in the countries as, as a new company. We have achieved that. We have um, hubs which are working very well. About half of, of gas supply is traded over hubs, and also the retail market is becoming increasingly competitive. So we, we have done quite a bit. But on the other hand, we also see steps backwards. We see that in, in some member states, um, foreign companies are moving out again because they are not, they cannot make money anymore. For example, um, in uh, in Hungary, we have seen that with tariffs and, uh, and price regulation. In Lithuania, we are seeing that that uh, companies are moving out again, and uh, we we have seen in Bulgaria that licenses are revoked. So um, at the moment, there there is a trend to to go back to um, nationalism to do it at a national level, even to, to nationalization. And the question is, why is this? People are afraid. Um, people think that um, if they only rely on themselves, that's the safest way forward. But the question is whether that is actually the case, whether that is not a big illusion. Um, as far as the infrastructure package is concerned, we um, well we know all know that um, they are these cross border benefits, but how are they distributed? Why should I pay in my country for a piece of infrastructure that is particularly benefiting the neighboring country? Now here we're, we're coming back to how how valuable is that European um, interconnection to um, one particular country. Um, 
the infrastructure package also intended to streamline the permitting process. But we hear from um, uh, the people who are actually doing the projects that there is still a lot to be desired in terms of permitting process, the lengths it takes, the, the problems arise uh, that arise, and, and so on. So we're not there yet. Well, finally, um, security of, of gas supply. Um, there's the question of, of solidarity on the one hand, and I think of me first on the other hand. The security of, of supply of regulation um, has market-based instruments, it has non-market-based instruments, but um, for example, if you have protected customers, you know, if you as um, an international company have to serve protected customers in one country, can you then also serve protected customers in, in another country? Does that work, or has actually the, the regulation as such got the conflict inbuilt already. Then uh, the, the question self-sufficiency. Is self-sufficiency actually a goal in itself? Isn't it that diversification, that we have as many diverse sources as possible, does the trick? If we produce all our energy in Europe, will it then be the safest, the cleanest, and the most competitive way of, of procuring our energy? And that's a question I would particularly like to throw in, into this, this round. Um, on the 2020 package, um, to come back to the, the cooperation element, we had the, um, the RES, the uh, Renewable Energy um, uh, Sources um, Directive, which had inbuilt the cooperation between member states, but they've not done it. They've not done it. They've all tried to uh, reach their, their national targets with subsidies that, again, distorted the market, but nobody really made use of the cooperation element that was there. The question is, why, why was that? So, um, well, in a, in a nutshell, cooperation is good, cooperation is necessary, but we have not seen that in all situations, and we particularly see in a crisis situation that um, member states have a tendency to, to look at themselves first again, rather than um, at um, Europeanization, because there's always the risk that it cannot be controlled, and uh, I cannot make sure that I will have the energy. But the question is, will I have the energy that I need if I don't cooperate. Thank you for your attention.